GM, good morning. Welcome to The Milk Road Show, the daily crypto show where our crypto insights hit harder than the first round of shots at a bachelor party or bachelorette. I'm your host, Jay Hamilton, and today we're joined by Kyle Reedhead, the head of research at Milk Road Pro. In today's show, we're going to discuss a few very important questions which can lead you to more profit. How? By understanding when is the banana zone coming and when it comes, which sectors are more likely to outperform. Before we jump in, 56% of you are not subscribed to our channel. Subscribe by the end of August and you could win our free investment masterclass worth $500. Check the details in the show notes. Now, if you're like me, you own ETH and you want some safe extra yield on your ETH, well, I just deposited some of my ETH into Kelp Gain. Check it out. Get ready because your reward farming game is about to level up. Introducing Gain, powered by Kelp, your DGen concierge. Gain is an automated vault launched by Kelp that maximizes rewards for ETH users. It offers one-click access to airdrops and points from leading L2s like Linea, Scroll, Karak, and more. Here's how it works. Head over to milkrow.com forward slash kelp gain and spot airdrop gain. Get a complete overview of how your assets are deployed and the rewards and points you stand to gain. With just a few clicks, deposit ETH, RS ETH, or liquid staking tokens into the smart vault. That's it. The best part, once you deposit, you're issued a liquid token, AG ETH, enabling you to participate in DeFi on Pendle, Spectra, Lira, Splice, and others. Gain is already live and you can go check it out for yourself today. Just head over to milkroad.com forward slash kelp gain and get started. Kyle, great to have you back on the show. First question that is on everybody's mind right now, when is the banana zone coming? I wish I could answer that question for you all, but uh, I cannot. Uh, I think it's coming sooner than later. Uh, but uh, the best I can tell is, look, macro is heading our way. We've talked a ton about this. So macro is looking good. Uh, and we know that we're going to a rate cutting cycle. Liquidity is picking up week over week. Um, I think the main thing right now is we just got to like actually get into that. We got to get out of the summer. Number one, these summer draws are killing us. There's no liquidity. Uh, no one is putting on any trades right now. You have the unwinding of risk from the yen carry trade. And so there's no one's putting any money in the market at the moment. And so we got to kind of just get through that first. And then the macro needs to tell us, hey, it's risk on. And then people can start to actually allocate capital again. Uh, but again, they won't do that until the summer's over. August is like just the worst month for this. September is usually not that great, at least in crypto either, but we'll see. October tends to be the months where crypto really starts to take off. That's what happened last year as well. If you remember Q4 uh, of 2023 was massive for crypto. Um, and so maybe it's just going to be the same thing. I don't know, but potentially. And then also you got to remember there's the election. So that doesn't end until I think like November 6th or something. And so there's obviously some concerns there because if Trump wins, it looks like it's going to be very bullish. If Kamala wins, it might be the opposite. So I think a lot of people are just hesitant. So it could be October. Honestly, it could even be November. But um, I think it depends on if Trump's odds of winning continue to rise uh, and go higher and higher, then I think people will allocate earlier than uh, than when the election ends. So for me, it's sometime in Q4. When exactly? I don't know. But if if we're not in the banana zone, or at least if markets are not picking up by the end of Q4, then I think we're at a cause for concern. But other than that, I'm not worried at all until until Q4 is over. All right. So right now, everything's still good. We got some time. Things are looking up. When the banana zone does come, and you'll notice that I say when, not if, because we are manifesting <laughs> it here at the Milk Road Show. Uh, do you think, two questions, will everything pump all 14,000 tokens, all million meme coins, or will there be certain sectors that outperform? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. So to answer this, I try to think of like, okay, what capital is going to come into the market, right? Um, there's there's different types of capital. There's institutional capital. Are they going to be buying Bowdoin and whatever other PopCat and all these other meme coins? Like, probably not. There's retail capital. Are they going to buy that stuff? Probably. So let's think about like, as we move into this banana zone, as we move into markets turning much greener, who's coming in? I think there's a combination of all of them, to be honest. I think right now, as I said, summer draws, a lot of institutions are not allocating capital right now. Uh, there's also a lot of institutions not allocating because they don't know what's going to happen with the election. Um, and then there's also a lot of institutions that have not allocated because of regulation. 
right? Where they're just, they're not allowed to buy liquid tokens yet. And so I think there's a lot of institutional capital that's on the sidelines waiting to get in. And that will come uh, once the election's done. And then of course, if Trump wins, I don't know how long it takes to get clear regulation. It's going to take a while. Uh, and so I don't think that necessarily comes right away. But there's also a lot of institutions that can allocate, but aren't until they're like, okay, does Trump win? Are we going to get good uh, regulation? Then they'll front run that, right? It's not like we have to wait until the regulation comes. There's a lot of institutions that still can do it. Um, and they just need to know that it's coming kind of thing. So there's a lot of institutional capital that will come in. We'll talk in a second about where that capital probably goes. So I think that comes in first, right? Generally, it's not retail coming in first. It's going to be institutional capital comes in. It moves the price of tokens back up to all-time highs and beyond. When Bitcoin gets closer to 100K or ETH is surpassing you know, 5,000, whatever that is, all of a sudden that turns light bulb on and retail starts to come in. And they go, oh, this crypto thing's back. I forgot all about this thing since 2021. Like, I want to get rich too. So I'm going to come in and throw my money in. And so you got to think about that. So there's the, the institutions that come in with hundreds of millions of dollars or billions of dollars. And then there's the retail, which now when do they come back in? One, when prices are much higher, but two, when rates go down. The idea of rates going down brings institutions into markets again because we want to front run it. But that doesn't bring retail in because retail still doesn't have money because their mortgages are too high, their car payments are too high. But as rates start to come down, all of a sudden every month they've got an extra hundred bucks from their mortgage because their rates went down 25 basis points. And the next month, another hundred bucks, right? And then their car payments went down. And so you think about it at some point next year, probably you have the 40 year olds who have mortgages that are saving a few hundred dollars every month from their mortgage being lower that go, oh, I'm going to start to put these savings, these extra bit of cash that I have into markets. Where are they going to go? Probably into your dog shit tokens, right? And then you have the 25 year old who has a car payment that's getting lower and lower because rates are going down. Where's that going to go? Into the even shittier shit tokens, right? And so to answer your question in the, sh in the like quickest way possible, it's like probably everything pumps. That's what happened last cycle too. Uh, and again, last cycle, everyone was getting money. The government was giving out you know, paychecks to everyone uh, on a monthly basis. Rates were at zero. So like everyone had extra money. And so it was like institutions, kids, like, you know, parents, like everyone was buying the stuff at the time. And I don't know that we're gonna have that craziness in this banana zone. Um, but I think there's still a ton of capital that comes in from institutions. And then there is the 40 year olds with with you know mortgages and the 25 year olds that are saving some money because rates are lower. Like there is all that real capital that is gonna come in. And so if I'm to predict where everyone actually puts their money, yes, probably everything pumps, which means like you could just go on CoinGecko, look at the top 100, close your eyes, throw a hundred bucks in each of them in whatever 10 you want or 20 you want. And you're probably going to win on most of them over the next six to nine months. But like, which ones are going to do the best? But that's, real that's question. not the best. Exactly. I was going to say, that's not the best strategy. Yeah. That's not what you and, teach at Milk Road Pro. You know, you've got course. some much more insight than that so <laughs> no that is us. my recommendation blindfold yourself <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> okay. have no if plan. you're gonna invest in meme coins <laughs> yeah if you're gonna invest in meme coins that's probably the way to do it like meme coins will have its moment again i think which ones i have no clue and i don't think anyone has a clue and it's because it literally is just that random it's whatever 20 year old comes in and goes hey i'm gonna put some money in and they buy some random thing because i don't know it was a TikTok video that they saw before you know like those things absolutely no idea. But when the institutions come in, that's not what they're buying. When they come in and they bring TradFi money back into crypto, whether that happens this month or next month or next year, like I don't know exactly. But when TradFi money comes in, what do they do? They want to value tokens, right? They want to make sure that they understand how does this thing make revenue? Does it have product market fit? What are the users coming in? It's looking for fundamentals. Now, institutions don't always do that. There's obviously a bunch of head funds that you know bought dog with hat and whatever, but that's because like that was kind of the only opportunity last year or this year, I guess. But most of the time when they're going to put in large sums of capital, they're going to look for where are the fundamentals, right? And so um, there's sort of a few thesis that I have right now. I think as macro gives us the green light and regulation gives us the green light, more institutions will come in. The other thing I think that I think a lot of people are sleeping on right now is in the private equity market for crypto, so meaning people buying, you know, Uniswap Labs or buying the like Solana Labs or investing in, you know, the the business before it as a token, that is getting very overcrowded. There's so much money in there; it's really hard to get a good deal on uh, a, a crypto company at this point. And what they're hoping to do is they buy the equity. They don't really care much about the equity. They know that a token's coming, and then eventually they can sell that token. But the problem is because of these low flow, high FTVs. 
is so many of these people that are or companies that are investing in these, they end up getting the tokens, but it doesn't, you know, vest and they can't actually get them until a year or two years or three years. And the tokens are down like 10x or whatever at this point, right? And so because it's so expensive to get into that private equity, there's not a lot of money to be made in there at the moment. There's still some, but it's getting pretty crowded. And so I think what we're seeing anyway, what I'm hearing from a lot of these uh, bigger funds that are in crypto is uh, liquid tokens is actually now where we want to start investing our capital. So we're moving into liquid funds instead. And so that's going to be really cool because when they come in, what are they going to be looking for? Again, fundamentals, all these kind of things. So they're going to be looking for probably revenue or users or all these kind of things. And so when I look at where is the institutional money going to come in? It's in things that have, uh, let's say, strong fundamentals, but their valuations are very, very low at the moment. And the best thing I can say for that right now is probably DeFi. There is not a lot of things in crypto that has like product market fit. But DeFi being around really the first sector to launch in crypto since, let's say, they launched more like 2018, 2019, they've been, they've been through the ringer. They've been through multiple cycles at this point. They aren't really giving incentives anymore. They just have real product market fit. And they are kind of the foundational layer for the new you know, financial sector, right? Uh, the decentralized financial sector. And they are beginning to do extremely well. If you look at Maker, you look at Aave, you look at Lido, these guys are making millions and millions of dollars every single month. And tokens have not moved since like 2021, <laughs> right? Like it's insane how undervalued they are in terms of their valuations, in terms of like price to revenue, price to earnings ratios. They haven't moved at all. You can see it up in this chart here is the revenues have skyrocketed since 2023, just up and up and up nonstop month over month. And you got to understand like, this is real revenues. This is real users coming in, buying up this stuff, using these things, and it just works. And they're making a ton of money, and yet their valuations aren't showing for that. And I think this is happening because we're not in the banana zone. Not a lot of people are allocating capital into liquid tokens yet, and crypto's just been in a lull for a while. And so I think when that lull stops, when institutions and TradFi starts to make these moves into crypto again, I think they're going to be looking for these things because they can value them. Right now, if you look at DeFi in their valuations, which we were just showing on the chart there, the price to earnings is something like 24, whereas the S&P is like 30 right now. So DeFi is actually cheaper than the S&P 500 at the moment, which is wild. And so I think that these guys will catch the bid first, um, unless maybe they got to wait for regulation. I'm not quite sure how that goes, but I think this is where the TradFi money is going to go, is the ones with fundamentals. That would explain why you and the rest of the Milk Road Pro team decided to add Ave recently and did a full report on Ave this past weekend. We'll link to that in the show notes so you guys can check it out. But when you guys looked at that, one of the key takeaways that you had was that this is real revenue, as you said. This is yeah. not incentivized revenue. And not all revenue is equal in Web3 or on-chain. And I think that's something that's very difficult to understand because you just, you look at revenue and you say, hey, they got revenue. But where did that revenue come from? How did they get that revenue? Can you explain to us this difference between what I would call real revenue and incentivized revenue? Yeah, absolutely. So you could think of this for incentivized fundamentals or fundamentals. You could also think of it as, and it could be <laughs> revenue. This also could be transactions. This could be users. There are ways to incentivize these sort of metrics to make it look like you have product market fit, to make it look like you're doing well, but you're actually not. So if we look at this chart we have up on screen of Aave. We're looking at token incentives versus revenue. Token incentives in this case is green and then revenues is, is pink. And what's interesting, if you look at last cycle, when Aave had first launched, there were tons of token incentives. They were giving away like $53 million worth of their token every single month in last cycle. And that was generating like Four million dollars in revenue, okay, four or five million dollars a month in revenue, and so they did this for most of 2021, and then just the beginning of 2022, and then they started to tail off, and the incentives came to basically an end. But what happened is over the next couple of years, Ave actually became a staple in DeFi. People actually started using it, not without getting paid to use it, and now you look and it's completely flipped, and you see that token incentives are way, way, way lower than revenue, right? So token incentives are near; they're not zero, but they're near zero. And yet revenue has grown and is even bigger than it was last cycle. So now we're making 5 million plus a month on Aave in terms of revenue and token incentives are sub 1 million, right? And so it's completely flipped in terms of fundamentals. So back in 2021, it looked like they were making lots of money. 
But in fact, they were actually giving away a bunch of money just to make that. So that's not real fundamentals. And so that's why you need to actually look under the hood and see what's going on. Are they paying to get this revenue? Are they paying to get these users? Are they paying to get these transactions? Or is this real? A lot of crypto is doing that. They're paying to get this stuff. But there are some parts of crypto, like a lot of DeFi, at least the DeFi on Ethereum, they are not paying to get these sort of bullish fundamental metrics. Uh, and I think that's one of the things, it's one of the reasons why Aave has done so well over the last few weeks. It's one of the best performing tokens right now. Uh, and that's because people are realizing like, hey, this thing is actually fundamentally strong. Maybe they're going to turn on buybacks for their token and they're not paying people to actually use this. They have strong fundamentals. And so I think that is a, a key thing to look at and something to understand. If, if you're going to look on Token Terminal or any of these um, uh analytics tools, you got to make sure that the the fundamentals or the metrics are actually real and they're not being paid for somewhere in the back end. And so if you if we step back, you like DeFi sector to outperform for the reason that institutional capital is going to come in, institutional capital is going to look for fundamentally sound businesses and businesses that they understand. They likely understand DeFi because it has a similar a lot of similarities to TradFi. Uh, yeah. And DeFi has Multiple, Ave is not the only one that has this strong revenue and these strong fundamentals. Am I summarizing that well? Anything you would add to that? No, that's exactly it. I think they're going to look for things that they can understand and things that are making money. And it's not easy to find that in crypto right now. Yes, Pumped Out Fund has some, uh, there's a few others, but for the most part, where there's actual tokens that are not these tokens where there's only 10% of it on the market. Like also TradFi is not probably not going to buy tokens where they know 90% of the supply is about to come on the market over the next two years. Like they're smarter than that. Now retail, probably not smarter than that. They might go buy those tokens. So they'll probably still pump and do well. I don't know. I just don't think TradFi is going to do that knowing that there's a bunch of funds that are going to be selling this every month over the next you know couple of years. They're going to look for ones like again, Ave Maker, where most of their tokens are already on in, in circulation, right? And they have revenues and they're buying back their own tokens through the protocol, through buybacks. And it's like, to me, when a TradFi person sees that and understands that, I think that's a really big deal. When they look at something like a meme coin or a token, like, like here's the problem with, with this banana zone. I think that everything is going to pump all the dog shit. Like Cardano, ADA is going to pump. Litecoin is going to pump. These things that have nothing, they have no traction at all, but they will still pump. But that's not because of the institutions. That's because of the retail that's going to come back. When I talk to people all the time that haven't been in crypto since 2021, they're like, oh yeah, I still hold some ADA. Should I buy more of that? Or should I still hold my EOS or whatever? And I'm like, why is that what you're still talking about? But it's again, retail is just kind of lost. There's a lot of people on YouTube that talk about some of these tokens. And so that's just, that's where that capital goes. But maybe, just maybe, and probably not, but just maybe we're at farther along, we're mature enough in crypto that you know, people will see that the ones with real fundamentals will will be the ones that pump. But I think it's going to be everything because I just don't think retail is going to get that. Dumb money, right? Unfortunately. So yeah. that's why you listen to the show. So you're not dumb money. So you're smarter than the rest of them. Okay. So let's take a step back then. What other sectors might perform well? And maybe the way I can position this question is, okay, it's great to look at revenue. But as you said, not many projects actually have real revenue and can prove that type of fundamentals yet. And that's okay. A lot of these businesses are very new. A lot of these projects are very new. They're just not there yet. That's not a, that doesn't mean that they're a bad investment. What are the other metrics you're looking at? What else are you looking at in order to figure out who might outperform in the banana zone? Yeah, I think so. Revenue is important, but not always important. Like if you think of all the biggest, like the Meg Seven right now in stocks, many of them didn't have any profitability. They had some revenue, but it wasn't massive. They definitely didn't have any profit for like 10, 15 years into their into their journey, right? You think of Apple, you think of um, you know, Google and Amazon, especially. Uh, you know, they sort of subsidized it for many, many, many years. And I think we'll probably see that. Like if you look at Polymarket, they have no revenue right now yet. Would you say that it's it's a bad company. Like, no, they're getting the users, they're getting the volume. They have a means to make revenue if they want to, but they just don't want to do that yet. Right. Um, and so I think what you also want to look at is again, fundamentals, but in terms of like users and adoption. So you could think of, I think the thing that I'm most bullish on probably outside of DeFi would be Deepin because Deepin though, not many of them have much revenue. And they're still trying to figure out how's their token going to play in their ecosystem. How's that going to work? The, the thing they have is adoption, right? If you look at Helium, you look at Hive Mapper. These are two really cool projects that are absolutely crushing it in terms of getting on users, 
but more so getting on businesses that are not even in the crypto world. You look at Hive Mapper we have up on the screen here. They have three of the top 10 digital map companies that are using their, their protocol, Hive Mapper, right? That's incredible. And I, there's just, you don't have that basically any other sector in crypto, really. Uh, and so you have Hive Member that's doing that now. Do they have a ton of revenues? Do they have buybacks to their tokens? Like, do they have that fundamental stuff, like something like Maker and Ava have? No, absolutely not. But they just have a better product than anything that non crypto map companies can create. So they have something, they have product market fit. And it's, it's a 10x better than what every other map company has, right? That's outside of crypto. So I think it has something real there. Same with Helium. Helium is the one that, uh, they're a deep end company where they're basically um, creating really cheap uh, mobile plans and data plans, right? And they now have two of the biggest um, uh, telecom companies in the US that are offloading some of their traffic onto Helium, right? So they're starting to get real business being used on their platform and it's working. And again, it's something that they can't, no one not in crypto can can build what Helium's doing. You need tokens, you need crypto to build this, you need the blockchain. And so again, you have product market fit, you have a moat somewhat, at least it's very hard to create what they've done or recreate what they've done. And so when I think of that, they're going to get the users, they're going to get the adoption because they're already seeing it and we're in a bear market. And so I believe that they will also do really well. One, because retail can understand them because they actually use them, right? A lot of retail actually just uses Helium and will use it because it's like 20 bucks for unlimited data. Like who's not going to use that as you learn that you can do that. And so if they're using it, are they probably then going to invest in it? Makes sense, right? So I can see fundamentals there from institutions wanting to buy it. But I can also see retail actually wanting to buy that because when is retail ever going to see Aave or they're going to see Maker? Like If they're not using decentralized finance, which most of retail is not, like they might not buy that token. But they're going to see Helium because it's a product for them. And so they might also then buy that token. So you get kind of a combination of the two. So I'm actually quite excited about Deepin. Now there's a ton of projects on there. Most of them are not going to do well. But you do have some that are beginning to do well. And that to me... Is, is really exciting. So I think DeFi and Deepin are the two that I'm the most bullish on right now. And if we pull up a, a chart here, just to show that you're really ahead of the game here, Kai, and what you're talking about, I've got a chart showing the uh, different sectors in crypto and the change in their market cap over the last 30 days. And you can see everybody is down. Bitcoin down 6%, Ethereum down 21%. Uh, obviously those aren't sectors, but then every single sector from RWA gaming to NFTs and onwards are all down except for one, which is Deepin, which is up 3.7%, not nothing and, massive. And most of that comes, yeah, most of that becomes because of Helium, which has announced those big partnerships, right? And I think that that doesn't stop. It probably continues, right? And so when Helium can show that they've got the fundamentals, they've got real users being onboarded into their network uh, and real companies that are using their network, I, I see no reason why that slows down uh, anytime soon. So, and, and plus, they're so undervalued versus what Helium used to be uh, when it launched. I think it was last cycle. Uh, and so there's lots of room for Deepin to, to, to move. I'm going to throw in a bonus question, Kai. This wasn't in the brief, so uh, apologies, but I think I think you're going to like this okay. one. I want to ask about AI because that's the other sector that a lot of people are, it's very strong narrative. So I don't know about the yeah. fundamentals, but it's definitely got the pumpamentals. What are your thoughts on AI? Yeah, so we actually did a nice pro report on AI last week, I believe it was. So pro members, you've probably already seen it. If you're not pro yet, I'd recommend go checking it out. But the... I guess the TLDR on it is I don't think there's anything fundamental with AI and crypto right now. I think there's a lot that crypto or blockchain can do for AI in the future, but we're a long ways from it. We still don't even really have good fundamental stuff for like AI in general, not even AI plus crypto, um, but AI is still a long ways off. It, not a long, but years off. And so for what blockchain can do, like you're not going to have any blockchain company that competes with like open AI right? Or competes with like Google or Grok or any of these. Because to create a good LLM, to create the, the, the app that people need to use uh, to use AI, you need a ton of data and you need a ton of processing power. And the only companies that have this are the Meg7 companies, like the big tech companies, right? No crypto company is even remotely close. They will never compete here. I don't care what marketing they do or what they tell you. There is zero, 0, 0.000 crypto companies that will ever compete, well, not ever, but at least anytime soon, we'll compete with the LLMs of big tech companies because we don't have the data, we don't have the processing power. What blockchain can do and what they can support with AI is being some form of like 
underlying infrastructure to make AI more efficient, whether that's like a marketplace for uh, reusing unused uh, or sorry, using unused like GPUs and processing power and finding a way to find buyers and sellers and match them like, like Akash is doing or uh, others are doing, like there's an opportunity there. Right. Um, and so like there is infrastructure plays for AI and crypto, but those only really matter when everyone is using AI and we're not there yet. Uh, and so I think we are probably next cycle is when we actually have real fundamentals for AI and crypto. This cycle, we do not at all. But like you said, there is the narrative. And as long as OpenAI continues to do well and, and NVIDIA continues to pump, I think there will be some plays in crypto that will do some plays in AI crypto that will do well. Um, but it's all based off fundamentals. And so when the bear market comes, I think those are going to do really, really bad. Now, probably every token is really bad, but I think those will do much worse. And I don't know that TradFi will be putting their capital into that. I mean, maybe they do. Like even TradFi makes mistakes when it comes to like bananas on bull markets. So like maybe they still do. Um, but I just, I, I, I don't know. I question that. I think um, TradFi is probably smarter, but who knows? Everybody listening, I want to know uh, of the three sectors we talked about today, DeFi, DPIN, and AI, which one are you most invested in? Which one do you want to hear us talk more about? And as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe. If you subscribe by the end of the month, you could win thousands of dollars in prizes that we are giving away. So make sure you do that. Remember, none of this is financial advice. Investing in crypto or any asset or any meme coin is risky and you should only invest what you can afford to lose. Thanks so much for listening in, everybody. Have a wicked awesome day.